So basically what I'm going to go over is um, like a multi-cam interview. Um, we do that a lot. Um, and specifically multi-cam interviews for cameras that have different native ISOs. So what we're using here is the A7R3. Um, and actually I should start rolling on this guy. Um, A7R3, I'm going to turn this monitor off. Um, A7R3 with the FS7. The A7R is its native ISO at S-Log3 is 800, and the native ISO on the FS7 is 2000. So using a light meter kind of takes a little bit of the guesswork out, and it's a little bit more technical. Um, the way I always approach them is I always light for the camera with the lowest ISO first, because it's always easier to take away light on the more sensitive cameras than it is to add light for the not as sensitive cameras. So always light. So in this case, I'll be lighting to the um, A7R 3 first. And Blake, if you can go ahead on the dimmer and give me, uh, let's try an F4. You're about a stop and a half over right now. Oh, a little too much, just a smidge up. Right there, right about there. there. All right, so if we took a look at the monitor right over there, um, that's giving me right around F4, um, ISO 800 at 24 frames per second. Um, and then uh, the neat thing about this meter is that it has two ISO buttons, so you can switch back and forth between two different ISOs. Uh, the newer meter, um, you have to kind of go in and, and set them individually. But for this one, um, I just have my ISO 2 set to ISO 200, or ISO 2000 for the FS7. And right now, that's giving me um, around 5, 6, and a third. So I'm going to go around to the FS7, and right now I'm going to open, actually, so right now that's about five, six, and a third. Um, and if we look at that monitor, those two, even though they kind of look different in terms of color just because of the different sensors, they should uh, be mapped correctly. I'm going to step right through you, Jeremy, and then I'll go in, and then we can actually go into false color here. And you can see Danny's hitting kind of just around 50, right on 50-ish um, on his key side. And then what's that like, Tyler? And then I'll go to HDMI. And then same thing. He's probably, this one's probably a little bit brighter, I would say. Um, but if I go back to the multi here, <coughs> they're just about the same. So what I want to do is... Um, I want to shoot at a, a wider f-stop on the FS7, but I, again, as I said, it's easier to take away light. So what I'll do is I will get a, let's see, what do I want to shoot at? <coughs> 5.6, actually. Um, let's close down by, let's say, 4, 2, 8, 2, 2 stops. So I'll get a 2 stop ND. Uh, 2 stop. Six. It should be laid out. What's up? I was just saying it should be laid out in order. Gotcha. Two stop in, crossing. I'll open up two stops. I'll go to two eight, and that'll give me a little bit more shallow depth of field. Do you try to get your depth of field to match? Um, sometimes, uh, not always. A lot of times I'll get my tighter camera, and in this case it would be this camera. I'll get this one kind of a wider depth of field, um, just so I can leave it, because people always move in interviews. And this is interviews specifically. Um, if I have to run two cameras, I'll, I'll, shoot, I'll shoot pretty wide, but that's why I like using Sony lenses on the smaller bodies now, um, because the autofocus tracking does a really good job of maintaining Focus in the face, like Danny. If you could move move back and forth to this camera, it should hopefully get you. I can't really control much here. Is it going? There we go. Yeah. So, like I said, these these newer. That's why I like using Sony lenses on these newer Sony bodies. So, lean back one more time. Yeah, it does a really great job of tracking their faces. Um, and so sometimes I'll match depth of field. Um, it just really depends. On what you're kind of 
Yeah, um, yeah. If if it doesn't have the autofocus capabilities as this guy, um, then I will shoot at like a four, maybe sometimes five, six. And I'm usually at a, at a tighter, like more telephoto anyway. And so you're still getting it usually, you're still yeah, getting nice it'll still it'll still fall off really nicely. But yeah, and yeah, well, two ISOs. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me actually take one more reading. Just double check. Is one a graded image coming out of it? What's up? Is one a graded image coming out of it? Um, they're actually both the same LUTs. Uh, they actually look differently just because there's different sensors. Okay. Um, and you'd have to just fix that in post. Yeah, I would fix it in post. Um, I use the FS5 a good amount, and I've, I noticed the FS5 is more like the A7R, actually. So in my opinion, the, the FS5 would look a lot like that right image. Um, than it would the um, left image. I can also actually, I'm on 4300, so I'll drop down to 32 and that'll look a oh, little yeah. bit more similar, yeah. yeah. That helps a lot, but. Um, so you leave that camera at what ISO then? You, you, okay. So this, guy's, uh, this guy stays at 800 ISO. Okay. It's, yeah. That's the native. Yeah, yeah. And then this guy is native at 2000. So I just I just programmed the two different ISOs in ISO one. ISO one is eight hundred, oh. and so right now it's giving me an F four, and then I can push ISO two, and it's giving me five six and a third. So I'll okay. set the first one to F four, the second one to five six and a third. That's cool. You can do that in the mirror. Yeah, you can't do it on the newer ones because for whatever reasons they kind of try to. It's a digital interface where it's all touchscreen, but this one, you have buttons where you can actually push and stuff like that. So that's why I like kind of these older meters. Um, and yeah. Would you ever set two different uh, sensors with different native ISOs to the same ISO uh, with like caveats like, you know? You can. Usually I'll, sometimes I'll do that, like if I'm exposing this two steps over or whatever like that, but then you'd lose out on dynamic range um, a little bit. Is um, it worth it sometimes though to do that or would you just compensate in your head? For the different ISOs. Me personally, I would compensate with NDs, like how we're kind of doing. Um, I would always just, like I said, always light to the lower ISO camera and then take away light with ND on the higher ISO camera. So that way, if you are shooting like a win against a window like we did earlier, you wouldn't lose out on any of the dynamic range of your camera. Um, that's what I would do. But if we're in a low key, a uh, scene like this, um, we probably wouldn't need that extra latitude. So in, in cases like this where there's not the only real extra latitude would be in that lamp, um, we might you lose start to clip a little bit of detail in there, but um, it would probably be manageable. And then yeah. as far, sorry, sorry, I was going to ask, what is latitude again? Latitude is basically another, um, how far you can push or pull things. Oh, okay. Another, it's kind of like another, term for like dynamic range right. in, a, in, a, in a way, so. It's the range from the darkest part of your image to the brightest part. Yeah, and sometimes I'll use latitude in that sense, or sometimes I'll use latitude in that, um, okay, I, have, I expose something two steps over, how much latitude do I have to like, or how much latitude does the camera have to pull it down? Oh. And if it just breaks apart, then there's not much latitude there. So it's kind of it's kind of uh, an ambiguous term, but um, it's one you that works. <laughs> no, that's for sure. And then also not on the fact of uh, ISO, well, kind of not on the fact of light meters, but ISO. When, once you start to change your ISO and stray away from the native on your cameras, that also starts to affect your dynamic range. Yeah, so yeah. Is, so it'll, that, and that varies per camera. Yeah. The FS7 is pretty easy in that once you start, because the FS7 makes it easy because it's always shooting, basically always shooting 2000 ISO. Um, and if you start overexposing or underexposing, you basically just take away from remember the six stops of highlight, eight stops of uh, shadows. You basically start taking away from that number. Okay. Other number or other cameras get really kind of technical, like 6.3 stops or 8.9, stuff like that. Um, like the new pocket. Um, that one is a really quirky camera, and their white paper is actually in the manual. Um, and that'll tell you as as you start changing your ISO, how like where all that dynamic range is going and how it shifts. Okay. So it's really just finding that finding the log, finding the white paper of your camera. Cool. Yeah.
when finding the dynamic range in your highlights and shadows, that they, they always refer to highlights as in any value above middle gray. That's okay. why middle gray is important. Okay. So you set a baseline, and then that's how you measure how much is in your highlights, how much is in your shadows. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to definitely do that with GH5 because I haven't done that yet. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's going to open up a lot. Yeah, and the way I like thinking of it is middle gray. I like thinking of my f-stop that I'm shooting at as middle gray. Okay. So I'll, if I'm capturing something six stops, ab so that means I can, I can capture anything six stops above whatever f-stop I'm shooting and eight stops below whatever f-stop I'm shooting. Okay. How does this workflow flow apply to like cameras with like dual ISO? Would you just be picking that situationally or like? That, that's a good question. Basically, um, the dynamic range would change, the dynamic range would be the same it should be the same mm -hmm. for both dual ISOs, but it will just shift. So for instance, the pocket, I think at four, 400 ISO, you should have more latitude in the shadows, gotcha. a lot more latitude in the shadows. And then when you go to 3200, you have the same amount of dynamic range, but all of this dynamic range is now shifted a little bit more towards the highlights. So you still have the same amount of dynamic range, it's just where it's you're placed. Kind of where most yeah. of, okay. You're just okay. shifting the amount of highlights and shadows gotcha. depending on what, which side of the spectrum you're on. Cool. Is that Anybody it? Else? I think that's it. That's really easy. <laughs> <laughs> Use a meter. Use a meter. <laughs> <laughs>